Okay, boys and girls, never fear. I found it. Guess what? It was on the floor. It rolled off the counter onto the floor. It was right there on the, on the floor. I also got a marble, too. But this is a little steel sphere. See it? A little steel sphere. And I'm going to put it... Here's the other magnet. Magnet number one. Now watch. Watch this. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can see that. Watch this. See, we can play a game here. Watch. Push. Oh, no. Opposite to track. Now watch. I'm going to flip this one over. Light charges do what? Uh-huh. I can push it all around. Look, I'm not even touching it. Is it like Matt? Look at that. Is that great? Watch that again. Ready? One more time for the good times. You may wonder why I say that all the time. One more time for the good times is a very famous uh, uh, song. Uh, a, a lot of people have done it. Perry Como, is, in my opinion, does the best rendition of it. You can YouTube it sometime and listen to it if you like. Um, I have a very high affinity for music. I really enjoy listening to music all the time. And I, I often a lot of times express myself. Instead of saying something, I'll just like, you know, let the lyrics to the song uh, con try, convey my message. And I'm sorry if that offends anybody sometimes, but, you know, I just, that's, anyways, here we go. There it goes. Okay, so they're, they're repelling. I'm going to turn it over, and now they're repelling. So we get this right here. Let's go like this. Yeah, I think you can see that better. Here's the little steel sphere. See? Right? Oh, yeah, that's it. The little steel ball bearing. And I'm putting that right here in the rail. And then here comes Mr. Magnet. I don't know. I got it all disoriented now. But let's see what happens. Maybe I got lucky. I got a 50-50 chance, right? Uh, here we go. Uh-huh. You see the ball take off? One more time. I'm not going to say it this time. You guys can say it if you want. You ready? One more time. For the good times. And then here it goes. And look at that ball go. Now, I could put this magnet like right here. And when the ball gets out, it should get deflected. Right, because it's going to be attracted to that to that uh, magnet. So let's try that. Give me my pusher, and one, two, very gently, three. Yeah, did you see it go? Did you see it curve right off? I don't know if you did. Um, we can kind of get the same effect with a glass marble or a similar effect, just by the uh, banging, just by the banging of the two magnets. I think I think the glass one might try to go. Well, it doesn't even want to stay. No. Forget it. Um, it's, there it is. Okay, let, let me see how good it goes. It, it, this counter kind of leans a little like that. Oh, no, it didn't, didn't go at all. One more time for the good times. Um, with the steel, with the steel sphere, the ball bearing, and I'm just sliding it very gently. See, I'm not pushing it. I'm just letting it, once it gets into the magnetic, the, the magnetic field of this magnet, it'll be accelerated by the um, attraction, the magnetic attraction, and go across the counter by itself. I'm just getting it close. See, I think it's got to be right about there. So here it comes a little bit more, a little more, and then boom. Right? Now, you may say, well, that's not really that impressive. You can actually accelerate things close to the speed of light. Um, I explained this to you before. When you sort of approach the speed of light, it becomes a futile endeavor because the energy that you're putting into the system will just increase the mass of whatever you're trying to speed up. It's been well demonstrated. This is Einstein's principle. We talked about his theory of general relativity in the paper he published in 1917. Um, and it has to do with the fact that it's impossible to fly or travel faster than the speed of light. Once you start to approach the speed of light, the energy you put into your system, your rocket, your spaceship, doesn't make you go any faster. Instead, it starts to increase the mass of your vehicle. Say your, your spaceship weighed 100 tons when you took off. And you're going now faster and faster and faster. You get close to the speed of light. Your vehicle starts to weigh 200 tons. So you push even harder. Now it weighs 300 tons. So you push more. It weighs 500 tons. It's a futile. You can't do it. It's just an impossible thing to do. But you can get close to the speed of light. And when you do, you can measure the mass of the particles and you see that they're actually, the mass of the particles is increasing. 
So that's why I said he was right. When you take something like a little tiny particle, a little atom, a little molecule, uh, uh, and put it in what's called a cyclotron or a linear accelerator, which uses magnetic fields, and the alternating magnetic fields, instead of just like one magnet, as soon as this, this ball takes off and gets over here, another set of magnets take over and accelerate it again. And then when it gets over here, another set of magnets take over and accelerate it again. You see, you see, what, what, see where we're going with this? It's like a chain reaction. It's a cascade. Each one amplifies, amplifies, amplifies. You get something that's like a mile or two miles long. That's called a linear accelerator, straight like that. They have those at various universities all around the country. RPI has one. Uh, I'm not going to go through the list of all of them. But I actually, uh, when I was working doing research for IBM uh, laboratories, uh, um, the building was round. Everybody thought, oh, how quaint, a round building. The reason the building was round, because in, underneath the building was a cyclotron. You know, underneath the whole, the building was huge. It went way around like that. Because what was, what they were all kind of like hiding was the fact that there was a cyclotron under the round building. Everyone just thought it was like an architectural thing. Oh, they're engineers, so they build a round building. They built a round building because there was a cyclotron buried underneath it, and no one really knew. Anyway, that's a story for another day. So you can accelerate close to the speed of light by alternating the fields. And if you watch the videos on YouTube, or if you pay attention in my slide presentation, Google slide presentation tomorrow, I'll show you that one as well. There's still one or two more to do. And um, well, uh, uh, I'll share those with you another time because I don't, yeah, I think I'm still recording, but I don't, I don't know. I don't see the timer. I think it stopped recording. Oh, crap. All right, 